tremendous opportunity for you to see the other side of the medal, to see what exchanges do on their side when they're listing your tokens, what is their motivation and what they are, what problems they are facing when you are sending them a request, please list my token. So, actually today there were not many women on this stage, so please let me uh, start with Michelle Cha from Corbett. Corbett is one of the biggest exchanges in South Korea and she is doing a business development and coin listing management. Alex Kastenko from uh, Exmo. Exmo is in top 20 exchanges, crypto exchanges. And uh, he's responsible for growing the platform and uh, scaling the business. And Dennis is from Cymex, which is a rising star uh, in crypto exchange. And uh, he is the director of this exchange. Yeah. Me, myself, I'm Maxim, uh, Maxim Kalvikov. I'm a long time here in the crypto industry. Right now, we're uh, doing the Bitscap all in one multi exchange platform. So basically, let me start uh, quickly with this because you're probably a bit tired, so you want to see some action. And this is a time for us to ask these intimate questions directly to exchanges. And uh, since January, we saw more than 2,000 ICOs been conducting their, their projects. And their great, the biggest motivation is to get listed on as much exchanges as it's possible. And uh, basically, you as exchanges facing crazy like times because everyone is writing to you. So the question is, how do you decide which tokens you're going to take to your exchange? And uh, basically, what procedures they need to go through to get listed on your exchange? Alex, would you be so kind to start? So basically, we have a dedicated team that uh, browsing all the applications and studying them. Uh, in general, we have like four points. It just uh, the project should be real. It's all about uh, how many investors they have, how uh, how big their Telegram chats, uh, Bitcoin talk discussions. Is it real accounts or it's fake? Uh, we're browsing the team, checking it out. Uh, sometimes in advisors, then we are uh, browsing the value for market, then uh, again we are browsing like uh, the motivation of the project and obviously the project must be ready to, to cooperate in uh, market making, in uh, marketing, because uh, we are like a real business and we are a responsible business and uh, clients in the first place. And it's obvious that uh, clients should get profit benefits the same way as the platform. So for us, the projects should be really like real ones, and, uh, and this is like a due diligence for us. Okay, yeah, thank you. So basically, there's a huge responsibility on exchanges before they get listed uh, to get you listed. Uh, Michelle, would you please share your point? Sure. So Corbett. Got a lot of requests from all around the world. So because like you know the Korean fiat is really like powerful, at, like especially from the December. So that like a lot of inquiries are coming up. So we got a we got an application form for our coin listing. And if you look at that, it's pretty much similar to the investor's perspective because like we're asking about what's your philosophy or vision and why do you need blockchain or why do you need tokens, like those sort of things, and like is your project really decentralized or something like that? But to be honest, what is really the important for exchange is the trading volume because we that is the source of our revenue, honestly. So, so like sometimes it's really against the the blockchain philosophy. So for example, Ripple. So like many people don't like Ripple because it's a centralized team and like. They don't. They are not exactly a blockchain, but like you know, the Ripple is really popular in Korea. So like, like every everybody except the like insider in this industry really loves Ripple. Like even my Philatest teacher loves Ripple. She doesn't know anything about the blockchain. So like, so we're figuring out the balance between the, this kind of like popularity and the blockchain philosophy stuff. So these are the things we're looking at when we're listening. Reviewing the points. Thank you. Dennis, would you please?
please share your opinion. Yes, of course. As we are just new to this market and came to this by the end uh, of 2017, we have uh, several tokens listed on our exchange. And at the moment, as we became a public company at the moment, as, and I believe uh, we are, I think, one of the digital platforms that are working with uh, digital currencies, who is now having a public status, we have to uh, watch carefully each token that is listed on our platform. But I also see the opportunity for young projects who maybe have the small community but the strong product and vision and technology behind the uh, ICO or just the project which is uh, looking for a listing. And I think the, and the most important uh, points to get listed is to have a real entity with all legal documents that can be uh, verified with uh, the support team. So it's going to be, it should be a real company, not, not just a person or just an application and, and a website behind nothing. So it should be a real entity. The second, the second thing, of course, it should be a contract uh, on ERC20 because at the moment we're accepting only uh, Ethereum-based tokens. And the third, of course, uh, the, the team and, and the product and the community is the last one because some project they maybe have the small community in the beginning, but it grows as the project is uh, listed on the exchange. Um, so that's uh, the base, the base things that we have to follow to list the coin. And at the moment we don't have them too much, but I believe that in the future months, as we are now started promoting our platform, uh, we will have a lot of more inquiries, and we are more than happy to work with uh, projects that are on the market. Okay. Yeah, when, uh, when we were talking to Michelle, when uh, I told her about some ideas that I want to ask on this panel, um, we were talking also about uh, scams and how it's hard for Exchange to find out uh, things behind the project. Even if most of the things are totally alright, it can become a scam. So the question for Michelle, like you wanted to share some ideas, how do you prevent scam in your platform? Sure, like, so I mentioned about this <coughs> trading volume, but like, that's not the only thing we're looking for because the trading volume is more like a long term perspective. So it shouldn't be a short term, like, speculation, trading volume, a lot thing, but like, it should be sustained for a long time. That means not scam. So, like, it's really hard to figure out. So, that's why I think this industry, there are a lot of advisors and investors, institutional investors, so that, like, if I got introduced by like investors or like if an advisor like has recommended the product to me, so that means they're they're recommending with their reputation. So I think if that advisor or investors are trustable, I think the project is trustable. So those are the one way to figure out how to like, avoid a scam. And also we're looking for the track record of the what the teams did before before the project and like do they have a real product or how are they building uh, building the real product do they have a like, potential to build and uh, develop the real like advanced technology or tools like that so we're, that that kind of criteria is we're looking for so any anything you want to share about this camp? how do you prevent it Alex well to be honest we're studying and browsing uh, the communities Uh, in the 
white paper to, to, to do, to, as I said before, like telegram chats and uh, to contact communities. I see, but uh, Exmo, Exmo is getting so much uh, requests, like every day, it's about 100 requests to get listed. To get these all checked, screening of the project, it will take enormous amount of time. And uh, that's, the, that's the question, um, how, what other problems, what issues you are facing, how many tokens do you list per week on, on your exchanges? Well, well we hope to, to increase the volume of tokens that we are listing on the platform, but uh, obviously this like past week we listed two tokens, EOS and Helpies. And uh, yeah, we do get a lot of requests say like that but obviously I'll be honest shitty tokens you, you'll see them straight away straight away and uh, other ones uh, again I'll be honest sometimes they, they won't get a reply even for like for a month they wait for a reply for months or even more it's just they all in the line and uh, right now they we have like 50 50 tokens 50 coins approved to be listed on the platform but they are Anything you want to add, Denis? Um, actually, not at the moment. We have uh, not too much uh, inquiries for listing as we are not uh, too much popular at the moment. It is about maybe 10, 15 inquiries and all with all small projects. Um, but uh, I believe that in the future we can, we can do more and we will attract uh, the traders and the project as well as uh, by promoting our platform. So, uh, Corvet is one of the really conservative exchanges because maybe because we're all like connected to the regulation thing, and like, because we're we have a fiat pairs and not a crypto crypto pairs. So government is looking at us, and so that we don't list really crazily. So maybe two per month like that. So like, we're being more conservative. All the due diligence, like we meet all the teams we're listing on, like having a lot of meetings, and so that's why I think we're having more like conservative perspective. I see. Okay. Thank you. Um, that's one of the one of the parts. But uh, probably if you're planning an ICO, already done an ICO, um, or mainly if you're planning this, you would be interested uh, how this whole technically looks like. So. If you are contacting the exchange, you want to get listed. Um, I would like to ask you how it technically looks step by step, or in some steps, how you do this, and uh, most important, how much time usually takes to get listed on your exchanges. Well, technically, just somewhere around a week. You just need to fill out well the document that we have, like uh, KYC, and. Uh, Coin is supplied on the platform. <laughs> I'm not really good at it, but uh, I know it's just right now we settled everything up that way that it's so, so it, it won't take a lot of time, especially uh, Ethereum tokens, uh, ERC20. So it's just pretty simple right now. Okay, like with Michelle, she already probably answered, and Dennis also mentioned these ideas. But here's Dennis, you mentioned that uh, you are mostly working with ERC20 tokens. And uh, we see more and more projects uh, that are building their uh, ICOs on some other platforms like NAM, Quantum, Stellar. And probably it would be interesting for them to learn, to hear from you, what do you think about other platforms? Because majority is probably also ERC20 on X2. So the question is how more complicated it is to add some other platform tokens to your exchange? So that is, that's actually true, so except the ERC20, so the tokens who have our own protocol is really a little bit tricky to get listed because, like, so the, the exact process is our R&D team has to, like, install and figure out what's going on with this blockchain and, like, our custody tech team have to, like, the operate the blockchain itself and wallet integration and our 
custody operation team has to manage the wallet itself and then how to manage the hot wallet, warm wallet, cold wallet and a lot of complicated things. So like for those like, who's using an own protocol and sometimes they have a problem at no in nodes. So usually those teams they offer us the technical support. So they send somebody to like support our like integration process and everything. So it'll be a little bit easier, but if I consider ERC20 will take like two weeks, those like other protocol will take like four to five weeks. That's my like estimations. Um, actually yes, for ERC20 tokens, technically it works in two clicks uh, on our platform. You need just to copy and paste the Ethereum contract address, add some details and add token, it is already and it's done. The most important time is KYC and the due deal project ads on all exchanges. According to new blockchains, of course we are open to work and uh, discuss the possible integration, but uh, it, it will take the it will take time to cooperate with the developers uh, in case the project is good to make a mutual integration. Of course, it will take time, and I'm not sure if I can say approximate uh, dates uh, how much it can take because it depends on the on the blockchain which is going to be implemented. But we are open and ready to discuss uh, to implement any projects on other blockchains. I see, okay. With Exmo, I, I heard you updated uh, the system to make this uh, adding ERC20 much more easier. Uh, how it goes with the other platforms? Can you give us an idea? Well, it just it goes. I mean, it, it takes time because, you know, like. Uh, I guess everyone understands the market's problem is uh, developers and uh, especially in our countries it's uh, hard to find a good ones, uh, the guys that you're ready to trust, ready to trust not just uh, like information, ready to trust the work and uh, won't, won't risk for, uh, after the job will be done. So it just, it just takes more time than we hope it, it, it would but, but it, it, it goes well. I see, because uh, the question came from the, the stream uh, the company was what was here at the conference because they are building uh, their project not on ARC20 so it's like uh, this question is coming, the ARC20 um, gets own links, has own links so that's why developers are thinking about switching and here is a great answer from exchanges that they are ready to accept uh, your projects on different platforms, just it may take a little bit, a little bit more time. The next, um, actually, the question that uh, we heard, heard so many times, that as you may know, getting listed on exchange may cost a lot of money, and uh, we all probably heard that uh, on Binance, and Binance it would cost around a million to get listed, and as an ICO, you would be interested to get. As to as many exchanges as possible. And here it comes to the fact that to get listed uh, on ten, at least 10 exchanges it would take you a lot of money. So initially the money that you raised on an ICO that has been meant to, make, to develop the product goes to exchanges. And here is a question like what do you think about the situation, how it's, uh, how it's going and uh, most important what really determines the price um, to get listed on the exchanges in general? Well, you have to understand the risks that we are taking uh, when we list, uh, decided to list the coin. Uh, well, most of all it's reputation risk because users, traders, clients, they buy tokens from us, they don't buy tokens from the uh, project managers or CEO or someone else. Who's, who's working on a project they, and all those questions uh, are, are, are scandals are coming to our side and we should like maintain it and this is this is a huge problem for us and uh, 
that's why we're like keeping our decisions like pretty con conservative. Uh, I mean, on the other side, you know, like you have a Telegram with their ICO and probably most of the exchanges would pay money to get opportunity to list their token just because of the hype. And on the other side, there is like, I don't know, any, any else ICO that, that I don't know, we, we won't list for any, every money in the world. And so the price is like, it's flowing. It's, it's very, very individual. So this depends on the project and uh, exactly on the idea. Well, what about Corbin? So I want to share the, the per perspective of market situation in Korea. So there's a four major exchanges in Korea, and top two are the Upbit and Bitstamp, which which are the top five exchanges in the world. So they are really competitive. So they say like, they don't accept listing fees, but they kind of accepting the promotional amount, like around one million, one million USD, and those are going to the not going to the like, exchange itself. So, so for example, like if one coin is listed on the upbet, so they're doing a promotion like one percent payback, whatever you're trading on. So if I trade on one million, they will trade back one percent of the one million to the users. So that I think it's a quite tricky to say like it's bad or good. So because like you said, like I see you among is going to the Maybe it can increase the public awareness, but I'm not sure if this is a good or not because I think it's not sustainable. So, and it's really hard to say they're not accepting the listing fee because it's quite a kind of listing fee. But it's, it's like this is as I know, but it's not for every coin. But some like new coins, they do a promotion together like this. Yeah, what I would like to add that. Uh as you can look now, the Binance, uh, HitBTC, and a lot of other changes that charge for the listing has also coins that are not tradable, even if they pay a big amount of, of money. And that's also a problem. And exchanges, I think they're not only trying to protect from fraud the risks and take big money, but also because of the uh, popularity, you know, and the reason that they just can't take this money, uh, they can afford to say, "Hey guys, I need 2.5 million to get to get listed," because they have a a, a big um, community of traders and they exist. So I think there is a bit of speculation from the exchanges side appears too, uh, and I'm sure the. Uh, the, com the companies, the projects, and the ICO who is, uh, list who's, who's getting listed on the exchanges is mostly uh, depends on the real backers and the community which uh, support the, the project and, and move it forward. Not only about, this is not only about the money that you paid for, for the listing. Of course, there is some option when changes they they help to build the liquidity, but suddenly it appears to you know, high risk of uh, the low liquidity in the future when it just pumps and then the price go really low. What I would suggest is to find reliable, reliable way, ways and do not waste a lot of time queuing in, in the lines of big exchanges, but find alternative ways and try to attract the community if you have one with uh, good exchanges that have also functionality and all the stuff to trade coin. This is just names, uh, big names of course it affects but I think um, there are a lot of good exchanges that can be used uh, to trade coin and you won't need to spend a lot of money, which you can spend, for example, for marketing or for other things. Thank okay. you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing. Uh, I think moderator has something to add. Um, no, thank you. Just wanted to thank you so much. And right. thank you okay. Very thank you very much. Yes. There are some questions. Uh, hello. Uh, can you please list top three risks 
you perceive from your business of crypto exchange in a whole? And then secondly, do you know which risks your clients perceive from your side? What they can afraid of from the side of crypto exchange? Thank you. Some exchanges uh, could be a part of that risk too. 